My father never introduced me to Dagon until shortly before he died. In retrospect, it wasn't that large of a shock to me. The position of Ministry of Finance had been vacant for ages, and though I never saw him actually doing the work, it was a role my father and his father before him had claimed to fill. It was a suspicious state of affairs, with only a few trusted and tight-lipped staff being allowed in the lower levels near the treasury, and absolutely no one but the king allowed to proceed to the inner vault. The inner vault was a small, mostly empty room towards the back of the treasury. It contained all the highest valuables of the kingdom, mostly irreplaceable and intricate trinkets and gems that didn't actually take up that much room. The first time my father ever let me in the room with him, it wasn't to show me any of this though. In the back of the room, filled with all the smallest and most ornate things in the kingdom, was a small and beat up crate the kind one might find in the kitchens. In that crate was Dagon. It was when I first laid eyes on him that father told me he was the most valuable thing to us in all the kingdom, that we and our people had prospered and been well fed and had a well-funded military for centuries because of Dagon's sole efforts. He was pathetic. The rim's skin was gray and splotchy, his wings were shriveled, though functional, with some effort, and one of his front legs had never healed right after an encounter with a rat trap, he would tell me later. He lied still, almost lifeless, in his crate on a pile of gold and silver coins, some of which had obviously made up his bedding since the time of my great-great-grandfather. Upon stirring, I learned one of his eyes was milky white, but despite all appearances, his voice was as strong as any man's, and he spoke with the eloquence of an era gone by. He and my father spoke like old friends, and meeting me seemed to distress Dagon somewhat, as he knew it meant my father's time was short. He loved my father, fanatically so. At the end of the night, when introductions had been made, and once I'd been briefed by my father and Dagon both, my father had sent me away to talk to Dagon alone. I turned as I left the vault and watched as Dagon had flown to my father's shoulder, where he was well received. From his spot on my father's shoulder, the tiny dragon gripped my father's lapels and leaned his head against my father's. Oh, majesty, the little dragon had said, and as if to say it was all right, my father had reached up and comforted Dagon the way one might a cat. It's the way of things, Dagon, the old king had told him. He took a few coins from his pocket and put them in the crate. These are the last coins struck under my reign, the last ones with my face on them. I'll be gone soon and wanted you to have these. A few nights later, when my father had passed, I found Dagon uneasily rearranging his coins. A quirk of his dragon nature wouldn't let him sleep and he was up most of the night restlessly rearranging them, shifting uneasily from the coins my father looked young on and the ones he'd given him most recently. <sighs> This was all years ago. Just as he had for my father before me, Dagon proved to be the most wise and trustworthy consul. I'd consulted him in times of war and famine, and he'd taken care of my kingdom. There were nights Dagon was sick, and I'd stay in the inner vault all night. Letting him sleep in my bejeweled crown, turned upside down on a table, and filled with his favorite coins which seemed to reinvigorate him. Sometimes he would leave the vault and join me, hiding in the folds of robes to whisper secrets in my ear when his wisdom and counsel was needed outside the vault. Tonight, I'm heading to see Dagon like I have so many times before. I walked the route I'd taken countless times like my father's had, 
through halls and doorways that had seen countless kings come and go. It took me longer than it used to, and some of the doors seemed to only grow heavier over the years. I passed the guards of the treasury, members of my own personal security detail, who could be trusted not to harm Dagon, even if they did discover him. Telling them I might be a while, I closed the door of the outer vault behind me and proceeded towards the interior. When I had closed the interior vault door, Dagon stirred in his crate, and his head rose on his long neck to see above the brim. Dagon, I said to him, as I placed an aged hand on the young man next to me. This is my son. The small dragon trembled terribly. Oh, majesty, was his only reply.